Ezat Hashem, today in Perkei Avot, we're going to learn Perik Vav, Mishnah Vav. We did yesterday, Mishnah He, the first of the 24 Kinyanei Torah, ways to acquire Torah. We're going to list another 24 ways now. Some of the Mepharshim explain that the reason the Mishnayot are separated, it's really one topic, so why is it separated? Is because really they're two different perspectives. The first 24 are ways that you have to improve your character to be able to get the Torah in the first place, to acquire the Torah. The second 24 are ways to keep the Torah in you after you've acquired it. So it's interesting, two different uh, sections. That's how some of the Mephorshim learn. Midrash Shmuel learns like this, and as we go through, we'll see. You could also learn simple pshadas. There's 48 ways to acquire Torah, but there's a, another way to understand which would explain why the Mishnayot are separated as well. So let's get into the last 24. We're going to start with 25 now of ways of acquiring Torah. Mishnah tells us, Hamakir et mekomo. Somebody who recognizes his place. Hamazamakir mekomo. What does it mean to recognize your place? This is a way to acquire Torah. What's, what does it mean to recognize your place? You know, you are, don't think you are a big rabbi or this or that. You... So what does it have to do with Torah? What does it have to do? Like oh, humility, humility, I hear, anivut, I hear that. Also, you know, to, to don't jump over your, uh, you know, your level. No, All of a sudden, you say, okay, let us me give, uh, um, uh, my son asked me today, Abba, why don't I tell you about your class? Say, Abba, why don't you give, uh, teach them, uh, to that, to teach Gemara, you really have to know what, you know, it's not easy. Uh, yeah, reach for the stars. Somebody want to stop uh, learning. Reach for the stars. Why, why settle for, I'm, I'm with for, your, for your own artificial I'm with this. ceiling? I'm with you, Hudan. I think that what you're both saying, your son I think Elu Ve'elu Divre Elu Kim Chayim, you're both saying the truth. The Who are the others? Yehuda, I think you're right. We're going to talk about that. Elu Ve'elu, I think you're both right. Like if somebody don't know how to read and you want to learn Zohar. Right, know? right. Uh, Excellent. First, and you have to know, you have to first know your I level. Said, yeah. Build, build up. Build up to it. Don't, don't pretend to be humble. The rabbi just said to recognize your place. Recognize your place. So what, what the, the Mephorshim explained like this is there's a concept that we're not supposed to, if someone there is gadol mi many, if someone's greater than me, and I start to interrupt and tell Mai what I think, let me hear what he has to say first, and then I could, you know, interrupt and with what I, I think. Interrupt. And then I'll interrupt, meaning then... Like me, I listen and then I interrupt. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on the day. So number 25 is Makir et Mekomo, recognize your place. It's important to know your place, know your lane, meaning Very you should important. hopefully, eventually, like Yehuda is saying is true, is you grow, yeah. you grow. That's number one, number 25 really. 26. This is such an important idea. In general, we understand Sameach Bechelko means, look, I get certain brachot in life. I have certain things that Hashem gives me. And you want to be a rich person, be happy with what you have. But in learning Torah, it's also extremely important because if I'm not happy with what I have in the material world, I'm not going to want to learn. I'm going to want to go make more money and then go make uh, buy a better house, nicer car, fancier vacations, etc. Mm -hmm. If I'm samech bechelki, I'm happy with my portion, so then I, I don't need those things and I'll continue to learn. But the Mephoshim say deeper. Samech bechelko means what's my chilek? My chilek is in the Beit HaMidrash. If I'm samech in my chilek, so when I sit to learn and I open the Gemara, it's a completely different learning. If I'm just learning, I need to learn. But if I'm sameach with my chilek, I understand samta chelkim yoshvei beit hamidrash. I understand that I'm sameach with that. That's a different level of learning altogether. Let's go on. Twenty-seven. Somebody that makes offense for his words, meaning a person is careful how he speaks. You don't just speak. You don't just throw out words. Today, many people they're very not careful. Say whatever they think when right away without even double thinking a second thought. No, I have to be careful. Maybe I'm going to say something that's not right. Chas v'shalom, I say something that's uh, offensive, hurt somebody. Chas v'shalom, I say the wrong psak. Very careful with how I talk. 28. It's very interesting. person learned a lot of Torah, and then he can start to say, you know, I deserve all kinds of credit because I learned Torah. And he starts to become full of himself. We learned earlier in Perkei Avot is that... 
that we were created to serve Hashem and to learn Torah, so we can't start taking credit for that. I'm doing my job, you know. Yochai goes into his store and he starts working. He doesn't take credit for it. That's his job. We do our job. So when we sit down to learn Gemara, it's the same thing. I'm doing my job. We're sitting down to learn right now. I don't take credit for that. This is my job in life. Koshikin, Kal Vachomer, obviously. Okay, that's 28. 29, Ahuv. Somebody that is Ahuv. What does it mean, somebody that's Ahuv? People love him. Why is that important? Important that means that you, you are a good person. With right. People love so there's a concept in Muravi Mabriot. It's important to get along with people. Very important thing. You know, you get a person, he's a great Chacham and all of that, but he sits in the corner, he doesn't interact. Ahuv means he's beloved to people, meaning that he creates relationships that are healthy, long lasting. This is also a chedek of Torah, by the way, because if not, how can you teach people Torah? <laughs> how do you accomplish that? We'll talk more about that in a minute. So he, people love him because of his midot, because of his good character, etc. And Ohevet HaMakom, he loves Hashem as well. You were just singing this morning. HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Hashem Itochach, because when you love Hashem, you learn the Torah with even more of a passion, even more of an excitement. Now the other one goes the other way too. Ohevet HaBriot, he also has to love people. It means not just that people love you, but you also love people. Because if you don't love people, you don't want to interact with people. If you don't want to interact with people, you can't fulfill Ohevet HaBriot to Mikarvan the Torah. You can't really do that. So it has to be a mutual relationship. That's 31. Now, some take out this, but we'll read it anyways. Ohevet HaTztakot, Rashi and the Gra take it out. He loves things to be right, ac- accurate, done correctly. 32. Ohevet HaTochachot. This is a very important one also. Somebody who loves Musar. Most people, especially in today's generation, they hate Musar. You go over to them and try to put them in their place, they get upset at you and scream at you. But really, if somebody comes over to you and says, look, I saw you doing something wrong, you should say thank you. (laughs) Really, we should say thank you. Problem is, we're so... Uh, it depends how they say it, but really we should say thank you regardless. Because if you came over to me to try to correct you, then you can't say that. That's what I say. All depends how you say it. But some people never like to hear Musar. Nobody wants to, most people don't want to hear Musar. Most people, most people don't want to hear Musar. Most people don't know how to give Musar. But we should really say thank you. Ohevet tochachot means we appreciate. People are helping us. Ohevet sharim. similar idea. He loves things to be in the correct path. Straight, accurate. And somebody that distances himself from kavod. Actually, before we continue on, let's, let's focus on that one. The Gemara tells us that the natural reality is somebody who is a Torah scholar, a Talmid Chacham, he becomes kasheke barzel. He becomes harsh, difficult, like iron. I mean, why? Because somebody that learns Torah, his mind becomes much more sensitive to things. So when he sees people doing things that are wrong, b- wrong, incorrect, naturally what might he do? Jump on, them. Jump on them and put them in their place. That might be the natural reaction. And actually the Gemara says, that's the implication you're actually learning Torah. But the Gemara says, nonetheless, you have to train yourself to be patient. You have to train yourself to be gentle. So that's why we learn Musar with studying Torah. It has to go hand in hand because the greater we get in Torah, the more we understand its chashivut, the more we might chas v'shalom, say something too harsh, too intense. So we have to also train ourselves. It has to be this duality of Musar and studying Torah, studying Nalachot, etc. Mitrachek min kavod continues the Mishnah, distance ourselves from kavod. Even if a person learned a lot of Torah and they say, oh, we want to give you positions, we want to make you the rabbi, etc., etc., you don't run after kavod. People who run after kavod, kavod boech mimenu. That's that's the idea. It runs away from them, and that's the wrong mentality. Velo megis libo betalmudo. Now he does not become full of himself because of his studying Torah. Rather, he'll still look at himself in a humble way. We just learned the Gemara today, Masechet Megillah. The Gemara tells us David Melech, before he became king, he was a regular person. Then he became the king, and the Gemara tells us based on the Pesukim, just as when he was younger. He would always make himself small and listen to other people who would teach Torah. Also, when he became the king, he was the leader of the entire Jewish nation. He would still lower himself to hear what other people had to say in Torah. It's true, now I learned a lot of Torah, but at the same time, we can never get full of ourselves. I can't hear what other people have to say because you're stopping your successes then. 36, it's very interesting. People want you to paskin. You've reached a level in life where you can paskin halacha. You need a paskin halacha, you have to. That's your job, you need to. But at the same time, you don't 
allow it to, you don't become overjoyed in the psak. Now, what does it mean to say? One could then quickly, look at me, look what I've become. Now I can be a posik, I can paskin alacha. You need to paskin alacha, but at the same time, you have to stay humble. The Gemara Masechet Sanhedrin, we just learned it actually, it tells us that Rav, when he would use, it was Rav, when he would go to the Beit Torah to adjudicate, to judge people, he would say beforehand the certain sentences which would put him in his place to remember, I have to be so careful because if I'm going to be a posek, I'm going to paskin alacha, chas v'shalom, I can make a mistake. And the mistake could be, you know, chas v'shalom, what it could do. So eno samech v'orah means you have to be happy with what you're doing, but not the fact that you're getting that kavod like that. Noseh be'ol im chavero, 37, this is extremely important. Noseh be'ol, these are all, you could talk about these, each one for half an hour at least. But noseh be'ol im chavero means you lift the yoke with your friend. And what does that mean? Somebody else needs help. He needs direction, etc. You don't just say, all right, here's 10 bucks, go away. That's not what you do. You noseh be'ol im chavero, he needs help. You feel his pain as well. You feel his suffering as well. You know this with the Matzav in Eretz Yisrael, with the situation there. So a lot of people wanted to know, what could we do to feel the suffering of our brethren in Eretz Yisrael? What is it that we could possibly do? Everyone has to come up with something, because you can't just say, yeah, you know, they're there, we don't have to think about them. Chas v'shalom. We are part of the same body. We look at the Jewish people as one group, and therefore we have to be no seba olim chavero. And that's one of the ways to also keep the Torah with us. What is it? I had a question to the rabbi the other day. Someone, someone calling you for help, for instance, you could be... You could be passing up a mitzvah opportunity if you don't call them back. Time to okay, I'm going to call this guy tomorrow. I'm going to call this guy next week. Beautiful. The guy needs your help. Beautiful. That's your mitzvah. Urgent. That Immediately. Call right. Him back. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, 38. There's two ways to understand this. אני חושב שהיהודים באמריקה גם עושים דברים, אבל אני חושב... כן, כן, יכול להיות שזה צודק, מה אתה אומר? יכול להיות? שומע? שומע? אני צריך לאכול עץ ועץ 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 He tilts people the kaf zechut. What does that mean? Literally, it means he tilts people to the side of favor. And there's two ways to understand this. So one way to understand this at face value is if you see somebody that he might do something right, he might do something wrong, give him direction, help him out, tell him this is what you should be doing, help him out so that it's lekaf zechut. The other pshat they say here is it's done lekaf zechut. If you see somebody doing something, it's unclear if he has good intention or bad kavana. We don't know. Dan lekaf zechut. It's the right mentality. Is judge him favorably. Assume he's doing the right thing. There is somebody in front and the mirror is filled up. Yeah. Don't right away jump on him. Right. Right. Maybe I'm a sick mother. Right. Exactly. Let him go pray and he promise uh, that I be. I, uh, uh, five minutes I'm going to pray and if something happens she's cold. Right. And she's cold. So don't jump on him. You don't know what's going on. Exactly. Beautiful. Beautiful. He's a so proud vibrate. 39. What's that? Who, Yosef? Yosef is amazing. Yosef is next level. We love Yosef. Mamitet, yalla, chaver, let's go ahead. What? Mamitet, 39 here. Ma'amido ala emet. If somebody is he, he's lost, unfortunately, a lot of Jews are lost. A lot of Jews, they don't know Emet, they don't know Shekhar, they don't know what's right and wrong in this world. So we straighten the Jew. If you see he's doing something wrong, you try to help him out, straighten him in the right way. 40. Ma'amido al shalom. This is a fascinating idea. Yosef, listen to this. Shema. This is important. Beniu ben Chamahi. Shema. Ma'amido al shalom. You fight with somebody in Torah, right? Chas I shalom. In, in, in the good way, not in the bad way. Not fight. Fight sounds very harsh. You have a disagreement, you argue about something, right? Mm -hmm. Now we walk away from that argument. Does that mean that I hate your guts after? I'm upset at you? Chas v'shalom. Chas v'shalom. The opposite. We walk away and we love each other because we're fighting with each other in Torah and through that the emet will come out. So ma'amidu ala shalom means we maintain 
peace between each other, even though we're disagreeing in Torah. Like it says about Beit Shammai and Beit Hillel, that they would fight about a lot of things, disagree. But they still would marry from each other's families. They would eat each other's shechita. They had no problems like that. Unfortunately, today, this is a big problem. If people, they, it becomes from within the area of the Shem Shamayim to something that's, be very careful about that. It's very important. Exactly. 41. Someone has to also have clarity in his learning. You can't have his zizuta dot. This we spoke a little bit about yesterday, but what's the idea? When I study, I should be able to clarify the topic that I'm studying. And a big benefit of this is when I have kviyut as well. If I'm studying the same time, the same subject, every day, I have a kviyut in that. I'm a little here, a little bit there, a little different topics, this, that, and the other. It's scattered, it's very hard to get clarity in topics. That's the one I don't agree with, but keep going. Okay. Mamdeth, <laughs> 42. Shoel meshiv. You see, we love you, Yosef. Even when you argue, it's okay. Shoel meshiv. He asks questions to get answers. This is a very important thing. Sometimes people ask questions, they don't want answers. They want to interrupt, or they want their voice to be heard. Shoel meshiv means you ask a question because you're genuinely looking for an answer. Sometimes you have people, lo aleinu, but we have this reality that exists in the world, which is, they don't want to keep Torah and mitzvot. They want to do what they want to do. So when they're asking a question, they're not really asking a question, they're saying a statement. I don't want to keep Shabbat. Because of that, I have this question. They don't say that, but that's what they really mean. Then you have people that are genuine people, and they come, they don't understand something. So they ask Allah, and you hopefully you give them, and they answer, they, they accept it. So it has to be, you want to really keep Torah, you want to learn Torah, it has to be Shoel HaMeshiv. It has to be that you're really willing to accept. 43, what? Rabbi Silva was saying the other day, that the questions that a person has in life are the tikkunim that they have to accomplish. Because those are the difficulties, those are the, that's whatever they're going through. So you gotta find the answer, you gotta sure. work sure. it out, look at sure. it in the book, ask the rabbi. But at the same time, it has to be that they're genuinely looking for an answer. But sometimes you have people, they're not, look, they're not looking for an answer. Yeah, they're, they're, people, you have people like that. Just so that you go hear the answer exactly. in their house. Exactly, exactly. That's they right. You have people like that. That's, 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 that's strategy. Alevai, they come back too in Tshuva. 43. Shomea umosif. And then when somebody says something to him, he listens. And not only he listens, but he even adds on. So the Torah becomes increased. 44. Halomed al menat lamed And halomed, this is 45. Halomed al menat asot. The greatest way to study Torah that it really becomes clear to you is if your intent when you're studying is to teach it to somebody else and teach it, and, and not, only, not only that, but also to perform. Because somebody who learns to teach or learns to perform, he's going to want to get the greatest clarity when he learns. Because if I don't have a great clarity, how can I teach it? If I don't have a great clarity, how can I keep this halacha later? So therefore, when you learn on condition to teach or to do the mitzvah practically, you'll naturally get the greatest uh, clarity in your studies as well. Very important. So you're telling us now what not to do. No, no, to do, to do. These this are what to do. to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. 46, almost finished here. Hamachim et rabo. Students who make their Rebbe smart. They ask good questions. No, no, it's good. No, 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 no. Machkim, machkim is chacham. They make their Rebbe smart. How? Because they ask questions on topic and it makes the sugya continue with the clarity for everyone. And then also 47 we're up to here, which is you equal, you calculate the contradictions between Shmuot, between you have a stira, the Gemara does this all the time. One rabbi says this, and in another place we find this, it's a contradiction. Mechavenet Shmuato clarifies the contradictions. 48, and the final one is, Ve'aomer davar b'shem omro. We know if somebody says, he hears a good dvar Torah, yeah. you say it over in the name of the one you heard it. And the Halamarita, this teaches you, Shekol ha'omer davar b'shem omro, that anybody that says something in the, way, in the name of the one he heard it, in the name of the one who said it, he brings Geula. Where do we know this from? Baruch Hashem, we're coming up to Purim, so it's beautiful timing. Like it says, Esther said it to the king in the name of Mordechai. What's talking about over there? We know that Mordechai overheard a conversation between Biktan and Teresh. These were two officers of Achashverosh. They were upset at Achashverosh. Why were they upset at him? He was bothering them. He was bothering them. Why was he bothering Every them? Every night to bring a food. So the Gemara tells uh, us a very interesting story over was, there. Uh, he was having a lot of tashmish, a lot of relations, and it made him thirst. Achashverosh. 
and he was thirsty. And so he was bothering these officers to bring him water throughout the night. They got annoyed at him. So they said, we have a great plan. We're going to assassinate the king. We'll put poison in his water, kill him. Baruch Hashem. Assassination. Assassinate is to kill the king. Assassinate. 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 Assassination. Assassination. Assassinate. Yeah. And so Mordechai was from the Sanhedrin, and the Sanhedrin knew 70 languages. And the language they were speaking was Tarshish. And he understood Tarshish. So he told Esther, look, these two officers want to kill the king. She went and told it, Bishay Mordechai, which is in the name Mordechai, your officer, saved your life. They killed those two officers. Later in the story, uh, the king can't sleep. They bring out the book and the king realizes Mordechai had done him a chesed that he didn't pay him back for. So then we have, parade him in the streets. And this was the beginning of the geula, the beginning of the entire story turning around from Chas v'shalom, destruction. Exactly. It was the entire hapecha, turnover. So this is, you see from here, when you say something v'shem amro, mevi geula le'olam. What's up, Shat? So the Gemara tells us a beautiful idea. If I read something in a sefer from a rabbi, he's not even alive anymore, he's in the kever. He's, he's passed away. And I say it over, I learn his sfarim, and I say it over, his lips are moving in the kever when I say over his Torah. It's a beautiful idea. So there's this idea that when I say it over in his name, there's this great power associated with it. Also, there's this idea. So, Bo Hashem, we finished the 48 ways of acquiring Torah. We'll stop here and we'll pick up uh, tomorrow.